Now, apparently, Matt is slightly hot. M. Patton Joel. Right, my name's Alan Hart, and today... My name's Professor Plum, and we've today... Got... <laughs> we've got Professor Plum here, <laughs> and he's going to show us how to solder. Well, I'm going to show you how You're to... You're going to show me how to press, because I've, I've never even touched a press gun. So that's the press gun. Ooh. Ooh. So now you've touched one. Yeah. So we're going to show him how to use that. And I'm going to ask you about gas. So can you tell us what's the difference between the blue and the yellow bottles? Right, so, simple. One's propane, one's MAP. Now, apparently MAP is slightly hotter. Yeah. Um, it just feels a little bit different a lot of the time. It's just you get used to one and then you just end up using that one. Um, I was always told blue, blue was for apprentices, yellow was for the pros. What he actually says, well, blue was for DIY. DIYers, yeah. <laughs> apprentices. Apprentices. I don't know if it's any cheaper. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. think there's even any price difference. To me, if there was absolutely no yellow in the shop, then I'd just get blue and it wouldn't make no difference to me. But I just pick up yellow when I go and pick up my gas. So shall we show them how I'll show you how to do press feed. Okay, let's have a look there. So we've got some bits of pipe, some off cuts. We've got some off cuts that we've cut already. So very easy with press fit. Yeah. All we need to do, we'd cut your pipe, deburr your pipe. You can get a tool that shows how deep that's on. Yeah. You would then mark that round there with a pen. Right. So that you know that once you've pressed it, it's on. Okay. A common thing that happens is people they might put it on like that yeah it might move and they don't know it's moved and okay. then they'll press it and then it'll leak later and then they'll blame the fitting yeah but it's just that they haven't done it properly that's so all it's, it's quite fairly deep as well isn't it it's there? it's very deep yeah if you look at that yeah it's in a lot okay and then it's just as just easy then you've got to make sure you get the right fittings for the right jaws so these fittings are for an m pattern jaw M pattern jaw. And if you have a look so on that, there, so that says those are different. Is it the brand of fitting? Then what's the? So there's different. There's different brands that still have an M pattern jaw. Okay. So what you've got to make sure is that you get the right jaws for the right fittings. Okay. And how many different types of press fittings are there then? There's there's quite a few. I think there's oh, I can't remember V pattern. I think there's V. I've always had an M, so yeah. I, I don't really know any difference, but. All we've got to do is make sure jaws are in good condition. You can get a lubricant that you put in there. Okay. And that just stops it when you when you press it, it stops it like jamming, sticking, sticking up, in. Yeah, yeah. But it's nice and easy. Put us jaw in there. If we're gonna put 15, that's a 15 mil jaw, just push that in. Okay. And that's it. And to do the fitting, so we've marked the fitting. Yeah. We've put the fitting in. And then we just, all we need to do is just press. We press that twice. And as you see there, you can just let go of it. What's really good about this, unlike soldering, if there were a bit of water in pipe, with no issues, yeah. we can solder, uh, we can press with water in. So okay. if you've got running water in there even, you could still press it. Obviously you'd have to be a bit careful with mm -hmm. gun. You wouldn't want water to run into your gun. But that's it, that's pressed. Okay, let's give it a go on this end then. So, that's the deburred end. Make sure that's fully in. And then, how do I open up the jaw then? So just push oh, it together. So just push like this. Nice and easy. Make sure that fits in nice. They say press this twice? Yeah. So on the second time, you need to hold it. Oh, okay. And then you can let go. So you'd hold that for about three seconds yeah and then it'll just press and it'll just do it all automatically okay and that's the bit where it's a bit yeah jams in but that's it done okay so it kind of squashes it up a little bit yeah and obviously that clamps on and then the o-ring the rubber o-ring is doing all of the work to stop the water coming out yeah that's it so it doesn't twist no like speed fit that's right. Okay. So bearing in mind, this is what they would use in commercial. Yeah. So this is, it's not a new product. It's only really new or newer to domestic. I've used this personally for about seven years now. 
And you do you use it on domestic? Mainly, yeah, so domestic I would use it. I'd nearly always use this rather than soldering. I do yeah. solder as well. Sometimes you can't get in with press gun. Yeah. So you still need to solder. Also, you need to take off old fittings as well sometimes. So you still need your blow lamp and stuff. Okay. Another thing that it's good for, you're not setting smoke alarms off. You're not breathing in all the rubbish. Uh, yeah, true, true. From soldering. So, my issues yeah a press fit is you're putting o rubber o-rings into a system yeah so if you're doing quite a large system how many rubber o-rings are you putting into a system yeah now i'm always a bit dubious and a bit worried about heat cycles with the rubber yeah now how long's press fit guaranteed for i think it's 25 years about 25 years yeah. okay as long as you do it correctly so mark it make sure it's in properly 25 years okay so 25 years now NV fittings I think that it just comes under copper pipe and I think it's 50 years I'm pretty sure right on that um, but obviously got no rubbers also you're not always allowed to solder in places yeah. nowadays so like some councils that you can't get a hot works permit so that's where press might come in yeah a hot works permit um, is one of the reasons that you I would maybe use it in domestic. Yeah. Um, but you find on most new builds now and sites, it's all bloody plastic. It's just plastic everywhere on all these new builds now. So, um, yeah. And what, so is press fit being used on gas as well? Yeah. So if you're going to use it on gas, this one had a black o ring. I don't mm -hmm. know if you noticed. Yeah, on on um, gas, they have a yellow o ring. And normally they would stamped on there it's a gas okay. sometimes they wear off though yeah so that is a little bit tricky really to be honest um, but yes you can use them on gas as well so that's interesting because obviously you wouldn't you wouldn't dare use a uh, push fit or speed fit on gas would you you can't use that on gas no. yeah okay no so it's so that's interesting now the only other thing is if you do make a mistake which we all make mistakes don't lie in the comments. I know some people in the comments make out they're the best plumbers in the world. But if you do make a mistake, how easy is it to undo this? You can't. <laughs> you can't undo it. So that's that it. is another issue that I've all, that I've that's seen as well. That's why it's for master plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> plumbers that don't get it wrong. That's it. That's it. <laughs> if, if you make a mistake with yeah. this, we had one up here, which were on a twenty-eight mil pipe, and it there were quite a lot of it one of them leaked which were my fault i pressed it wrong and it were quite costly because i had to cut loads of it out yeah to get back to that okay um so yeah i think they're really good but if you make mistakes then it can be costly so there's so, lots of advantages to both really and yeah. they've both got their own place absolutely um but i think it belongs in commercial we can stay in warehouses Put comment below, let us know what you think. Now, do you want to tell us about soldering? So, soldering, it's obviously priced per fitting, it is cheaper. Now, if you are self employed and you're working for yourself, and especially if you do like domestic, if you want to just bring the, bring the price down both for yourself and for your customer, is NV the way forward? It could still be the way forward. Now, obviously, the downsides are. If there is, you need to sign a hot works permit. Yeah. If you do need to do one, if you do have the um, carcinogens that are created when you're burning the flux and uh, if you burn the pipe. So obviously you don't want to be breathing all of that stuff in. Now, there's a few things you need. See, so with press, all you need is your press. You need a couple of size, different size jaws. Now, when you're soldering, you're going to need to get yourself some wipes you're going to need yourself something to clean it up so if it's spray also what i don't have right here is you need um maybe some wire wool yeah um because it's always best practice to clean up your pipes get them nice and shiny before you actually put the flux on and not just rely on the flux to clean the pipe uh, so you do need quite a few consumables um there's loads of different fluxes as well so also you've got a gas bottle that you're gonna have to yeah you're gonna have to change. get yourself a gas bottle blow torches 
it, if you don't store them right and they rattle about in the back of your van, blow torches break quite easy. They're quite fragile, I think. Um, although you can get servicing kits and stuff um, and you can take them apart and you can fix them, it can be a bit costly if you do break one. And if you do break one and you only solder, then what are you going to do? I'd always have a spare one anyway. Yeah. But saying that, I mean, a press gun for that, you're probably looking at about £1,500. So you, yeah. can, you can get a lot I of spare. I believe the price has come down a little bit, though, hasn't it? Um, you get the, I think, it, yeah, you, I mean, you might be able to get it for maybe 1200 with three jars. Yeah. So you need your 15, 22, and 28 jars mm. as well. You've also got to have it calibrated every year. Okay. That's so that's another cost as well that be involved in press fit. Mm -hmm. So th there's. You know, there's pluses and minuses with both. Do you want to show us how to solder? Right, no one likes to see someone else solder because it's always wrong. But this is how I solder. Usually I'd clean it up with some wire wool, but I haven't got any wire wool to hand and I'm not running out in the bags, it's raining. So I'm going to run some flux and I use Everflux. See, that's wrong for someone out there because someone out there goes, I don't use Everflux. I'd use Laco or Powerflux or whatever the other brands are. So I put a little bit around the outside of the pipe on both. Now, depending on what is going through this pipe, so if you're doing gas or you're doing central heat pipes, then you don't want to be putting um, any flux inside of the actual fitting. Now, if it's on water or something that can be flushed out, then you can put a little bit on the inside. And with the other side, we're not going to put any. So. Just put that in, give it a little turn, and what we will do is get our cloth ready. Now, I love these ultra-grime wipes, so uh, I use these rather than just using a, a dirty rag and just smearing old flux and um, back, basically back round brand new fittings. So we just want to clean off the excess. If you clean off the excess, then it's not going to track and run down the pipe. I'm going to turn on the blowtorch. Now it's going to get noisy when I'm soldering, um, and you're probably not going to be able to hear me. But what I want to do is I want to turn this on. I want to get it to a nice medium heat. And we're going to heat up the fitting, and we're going to keep continuously either moving the gas bottle, but because I'm not going to be moving the gas bottle, I'm going to be using some grips just to hold it in place whilst I'm soldering, is I'm gonna continuously move it. Now, if you move it, just one thing just to point out there, just to, sorry to interrupt you, you crushed that pipe a little bit there. Can you tell people why you did that? That's so that it doesn't flop about whilst I'm soldering. But that's actually a good, you just did that automatically then. Yeah. But that's <laughs> actually something that's really good that you did that. So you just crushed it a little so bit. It's, yeah, it's just a tiny little nip and it will just stop it twisting about, especially if you're going to be holding it with grips so that it doesn't go floppy. So the reason that I move it about is so that if you just focus on one spot, you're not heating the whole fit in, causing that capillary action. So, um, and also you don't want to burn, end up burning the pipe, so it stops you burning the pipe. Now, capillary action, capillary, capillary attraction, action, uh, However you say it, you're saying it right, don't worry. Um, I call it capillary action. But some people say it's attraction. I don't know. Action. But basically, if you put two smooth surfaces together, the water will actually, the fire gravity, and will suck up inside of it. So you can actually uh, demonstrate this, and some college students do this, is if you get two panes of glass and you dip them in a bucket of water, you'll see that the water will actually shoot up find gravity and go in and fill in that cavity so that's what we're doing so we're turning the solder where's the solder gone oh no we lost the solder did you bring some solder i did bring solder and i'm sure i did <coughs> so we're going to be taking this metal solder we're going to be heating it up so it turns into a liquid and when it's in liquid form it will shoot up in between the pipe and the fitting draw into it and then when it cools down, it turns back into a solid, making one continuous joint. So, let's give it a go. Mm
So there we go. Now, how much shoulder do you need to put in? So it's actually supposed to be half the width of the uh, copper pipe, whatever pipe you're using. So it's supposed to be half the diameter. So it's like that, halfway along, something like that. That's what I was taught in college. But if it's out of sight, out of mind, put plenty on. There's no harm in that. Um, you're not really gonna cause much damage. And there we go. So we're gonna give that a little bit of a clean up. Now, a cheat, which some people give you a slap on the wrist for doing, is getting in a little bit of flux and just putting it on the pipe work. Now, flux is a cleaner. That's why you put the flux on, so it makes a nice shiny surface uh, for, the, for the liquid metal to go around. Now, if you wipe a little bit on like that, you can get rid of any burns and any discoloration like that and get it nice and shiny. But if you do do that, make sure that you wipe it off thoroughly. So I'm going to give it a wipe off. And then if you wipe it off like this and you just to get some um, wire wool, you can make that look very nice and neat. But yeah, you can judge my solder. You can uh, mark my solder in it's a nice, neat job, out, of, uh, out of 10. And I'm sure you guys have done it much neater in the past and so on. But there we go. Let's solder in, let's press. I'm still not convinced. What do you what have you have you gone are you leaning more towards press nowadays? I would normally use press now, just because it's easier. I've no chance of setting that on fire. If I were doing it every day, loads and loads of work, I might use might go back to might go back to soldering. Mm -hmm. But I just think it's personal preference really. Yeah, and so. also cost, mm -hmm. obviously, what we're saying, that's about maybe 20% of cost. Yeah, that, that's far, far cheaper. So, um. Also, another thing just to point out is the size of the fittings. Obviously, the yeah, soldered a ones difference, big, a big lot difference. smaller. So if you need to get in, a lot of times solder is better. Sometimes press is better. As I say, if you've got water going through. I think as well for like radiators, although, yeah, you can't, you could set a bend on some benders uh up to a radiator tower you couldn't do all fittings you'd have to have you, a set you of can get street ones as well yeah but it's having that finding that way of making things fit yeah um they can be a little bit bulky and you yeah. have to buy special drain offs as well yeah you? you buy longer longer drain yeah, offs longer tail drain offs yeah um they press fit barrels you got as well I've got press fit valves as well, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So if you've got any questions about soldering, press fit, please put some comments below. If you want to see more of Professor Plum, he's on TikTok. Search for him on TikTok. He's got an amazing channel on there. I think he's one of the top plumbers on there. Uh, I think he's one of the top plumbers on I'm there. I'm the best plumber if you exclude gas engineers. I'm not a gas engineer, so. He's a plumber. So there yeah, you go. search for him. And as I say, any questions, put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Cheers.